In coding, very often you need to make a decision. Something happens under one scenario, but under a different scenario, something else happens. So you need to be able to ask, if this, then do that. Otherwise, do this other thing, right? And so these logical conditions that we need to set up, we can accomplish them using if statements, right? So there's lots of different logical operators that we saw in the last video, right? Equals, not equal, less than, greater than, equal to, all these different things. We already know how to apply those operators. We can apply those to individual variables or to conditions, such as um, is something in this list? If that's true, then take this action, right? So that's a membership operator. So lots of different ways we can use these. But what's the uh, syntax for actually creating the if statement? Well, we begin our if statement with the if keyword, right? Then we put the condition, and then we end it with our colon, right? When you hit enter, it will automatically use white space to denote that this block of text corresponds to that statement. Let's show you what this looks like in the code. So here in Spider, let's de declare a couple variables first. Let's say that x is equal to 4, all right? Now let's come down here and make an if statement. We're going to say if x is greater than 0, right? We want a certain action to play, take place. So we're going to do the colon and hit enter. Notice that it did the four spaces of white space, and now we can go ahead and say what the action is. Maybe let's print it. Let's say print. Um, let's see, we needed this to be a string. So let's say the number is larger than 0, OK? So we could end our statement right there. That could be all that we have. If we run it, let's see what happens. We're going to run this. It stores the value 4 into x. And sure enough, we get this thing spit out. The number is larger than 0. Great. So what's going to happen if our number is equal to negative 2? Well, we're going to run it. And nothing's going to happen down here. There's nothing that gets output. right? It's just storing a negative 2 here. So it asked if this was true. And since it was false, it didn't enter this if statement, right? And so it never performed this action, which corresponds to one condition, the condition where that's greater than zero. Something that's cool about these if statements is we can now, we can add other things. We can say L if, right? That's a new keyword. That means else if, or if that's not the case, else, we can make another condition. Let's say that x is less than zero, right? So that's our new condition. If it's less than zero, we want it to do something else. Maybe we're going to print uh, the opposite of this. We're going to say print. Oops, we got to make sure that we only have four. See how it did that? It took the four from before, and it included those, but I already had four. That would be a problem. Because remember, the way that we denote what's happening and what is the, with this white space, we have to be conscientious about what we're doing. So we're going to say print. The number is less than 0, right? Um, let's do greater than up here. So now when we run that, uh, what's going to happen? It's going to say, oh, the number is less than 0. Great. So what will happen now if we set x equal to 0, right? It doesn't know what to do again, because now neither of these conditions are met. What's great is we can add this other scenario. We can say else. And that just means if anything else happens, right, no matter what else it is, uh, this is what it, it, we want it to do, it, right? So we're just going to say now it must be Oops. the number is 0, right? If it's not greater than 0 and it's not less than 0, then it must be equal to 0, OK? So there we go. And we could add as many of these else ifs as possible, as you want, right? You can just keep on adding them. And uh, what happens if more than one is true? Well, let's try that out. Let's take this one, and let's make another scenario. All right, so this time we're going to do another L if statement. This time we're going to say, if it's greater than 0 and x is less than 10, right? So how about that one? So sorry, it needs to be greater. So we're asking, first off, it's saying, is it greater than 0 in this first block? And if so, we say, yes, it's greater than 0. Here we're going to say the number is greater than 0 but less than 10, OK? And then it's the same as before. So what's going to happen? Let's run it and see. So first off, we didn't change our value. It's still set to equal 0. So let's set this to equal 4. So now it satisfies these first two conditions, but it doesn't satisfy that one. And since it's going to satisfy one of these, it shouldn't flag this one, because else is only if it doesn't work for any of these other prior ones. So let's try and see what happens. So it says the number is greater than 0. You see that even though this other condition is also true, 
it doesn't go into it because it takes the first one where it is accepted, right? So we could change this one. We could say this one. We could say and x is, um, let's see, less than 3. So now we're saying is the number greater than 0 but less than 3? And 4 doesn't fit that criteria, but it does fit the second one. So when we run it, we're going to get that second answer coming out, the one where it says greater than 0 but less than, well, less than 10 is the response there. So those are if statements. You can see how those work. Now, just like you can have nested dictionaries and lists, you can have nested if statements. So let's see what that looks like. So let's try and modify this one, okay? So previously we said if it's greater than zero, we wanted it to take an action. Let's make that a little more clear what the action is. Okay, we're gonna make a nested if by tabbing this over, right? So now that that's part of it, it's going to, instead of printing this number, we're, we're going to ask it a question. So this thing, needs to be part of the else if statement. So now we're going to say, all right, if you are greater than zero and less, and less than 10, then we're gonna say the number's greater than zero but less than 10. But, so we're gonna do another L if, oh sorry, this should be an if statement right here. Now this L if is gonna say, oops, what's our condition here? If you are greater than zero and you're greater than 10, that's a different scenario. Now we're going to have it print something else. We're going to have it print, that must be a big number. Okay. So let's try this now. With our number being 4, so we enter this first loop. It says, is it greater than 0 and is it less than 10? Well, first off, is it greater than 0? It is. Now it's going to ask, is it greater than 0 and less than 10? So it should flag that. So let's try it. And it says, sure enough, the number is greater than 0 but less than 10. Now let's change this to 14. So it's going to enter this first loop because it's greater than zero, this first if statement. Now it's going to ask this next if statement. It says, is it greater than zero but less than 10? It's not, so it's going to skip to this one and it's going to say it is greater, so we should get this. That must be a big number coming out. And that's what we get, okay? So if statements are pretty slick and you can just keep on stacking these. If we wanted to do another one, we could just keep on doing these. Um, but those are your if statements. It's possible to put the else on the same line if you have something really short, like over here, let's comment all of this out, right? So let's, let's consider this scenario. Let's just comment this whole thing out for a minute. And let's do this. We're gonna say that we have a fruit equal to apple. And now we're going to say, is apple, the variable is apple, equals true if the fruit is equal to apple, and otherwise it's going to be false. So let's run this. And we're going to have a new variable, one for fruit, which says apple. And then is apple is now set to true because it did a it did a logical condition, right? It asked, it said, if fruit, which is we know stored it to equal apple as a string, equal to apple, then it's true. Else, we're going to put out false. So that's how you can put these onto one line. If you are coding, you can't have nothing in an if statement, right? So let's go back to our first example. Let's comment this one out and we will uncomment these ones. Oops. So grab all that, control one. Let's say that we got to here and if x is less than zero, we want it to do something, but we don't know what we want it to do yet. You can't just leave it blank. If we try and run this, let's make this a negative number and see what happens. So it says unexpected indented block, right? So it's not liking that. Even if we get rid of that, it's not liking it. So we need to have something there. So let's, we can use the keyword pass. Pass just means move along, keep going, don't do anything. Now that should at least work. Okay, so it runs without an error. So you can use pass if you don't know what you're gonna put and you can decide to come back later and, and finish it, but th this at least won't throw an error, okay? Now, uh, with your if statements, we've done it where we've shown two, but you could have as many of those as you want, right? You could have lots of conditions it has to meet, right? And fruit has to be equal to apple, right? Oh, we forgot to define our fruit. So we're gonna say fruit equals apple up here. We'll go ahead and run that, and there we go. So that is how you use if statements in Python.